Well, joining us now is someone who survived the attack. We've met him before. We love talking to him. Victor Gregg was a British prisoner of war being held in the city when the bombings took place. And we've also got Dan Stowe, who we've also met before. I love chatting to. And, and you both um, have very strong views about the rights and the wrongs of the bombing, don't you? And you were actually there. Victor, you were there prisoner of war, actually been waiting to be executed because of your attempts to escape when the bombing started. I know you've lived with the memories all your life, but can you remember the moment when you suddenly realised that you were being bombed? Oh, uh, no. It, we realised what was going to happen uh, uh, directly when we saw the, uh, the, the pathfinders dro uh, dropping, uh, dropping their flares because... Uh, the place where they'd put us was, I thought it was a big public library. It was a public building in there, and they had a, a, a sort of a glass cupola over the entrance of, entrance mm. hall. No, no, it wasn't a big, but it was glass, and, and you could see through it. And when we heard these players come over, it was the mosquitoes. So directly when they dropped their flares, we knew that we was in trouble. Mm. The bombs were coming. But um, even then, though, you couldn't have appreciated the scale of what was about to happen, could you? Uh, didn't have time. No. Uh, the place was absolutely packed with people in a similar uh, position to me and Harry. Uh, no, we didn't have to get... But there, there must have been some of them who had been through it before because they were screaming their heads off. Uh, and the guards had uh, locked everything from the outside and disappeared. No, it, 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 it wasn't a case of realising we are going to get uh, bombs. I don't think we even uh, give a thought whether we were going to live through it. it. It was just happening. It was just a horror that had descended it upon you and was so widespread. You did manage to get out, though, and, and you saw sights that have never left you, really, didn't you? Well, it, uh, the first raid had been on about half an hour. The main body... Had gone, and they, so they got lines of stragglers coming. Mm. Uh, and then, wow! This this uh, bomb landed outside the building. Big bomb it was, must have been, and smashed the building completely. Uh, and it picked me up, threw me over the other side of the building, and I got covered in all the dust and the stuff. And. Uh, Harry must have taken a full concussion because when I finally come to and crawled back to where he was, he, he, he was dead. Mm. Harry, was, there wasn't a mark on him except all the blood and stuff had come out of every orifice mm. he had. So I, that's what I assumed that, uh, that uh, what had happened. It, concussion had killed him. It's the stark horror of that, Dan, of what Victor's going through, but also when we look at the pictures mm. of the scale of the dev devastation, the absolute obliteration of Dresden is just an... Ex it's extraordinary to imagine anybody surviving. And anyone having an individual story like that for every single one of those bombs? What happened was that in the first raid, it was just like a normal bombing raid. Mm. I'm only talking about what I remember. Sure. Of course. Whether I'm right or not, I don't know. But then... That road finished. And then people started coming out of what was left of their houses mm -hmm. or trying to get out. And quite a lot were walking about. And then, of course, you had uh, hundreds of uh, people walking about who were like coming in from the east to get away from the Russian army. Because in the centre of Dresden, it's February, mm. it's cold, and they want some warmth, and they were chipping down in the centre of Dresden, thousands of them. Uh, all these people were out in the open when the second raid started. And it was the fires, wasn't it, Vic? It was the fact that lots of these bombs were incendiary bombs mm. as well as high explosives. So this, the fire, it says the flames reached almost a mile high, the entire city became an inferno. This happened uh, like the second raid because they dropped a new, an entirely different sort of bomb. Mm. Uh, these big... They'd set, they'd set the place a lot with the incendiaries on the first bomb. And take take mm. the roofs off and things like that. But these bombs, they used in the second wave were huge. You could see them coming out the plane like a big bus. Wow! And when that incendiary, four thousand pound incendiary, hit the floor, 
then anything within 300 yards was immediately incinerated. Victor, why do you feel, why do you feel that it was wrong? You've, you told me before, well, you're certainly you, no... You, because the place was full up with old people. It was, it was full up with people who couldn't be used in the war. It was full up with refugees. Uh, there was women and kids. Uh, I never... I, they tell me, they tell me that there were certain... Uh, there were certain things being done in, in the Dresden area, like, which was of use to the war effort, but I never, felt, I never saw them. Uh, have you, Dan, yeah. have you ever been able to find I've seen women for the scale? Because of, of what they did? And, because, I mean, I think there's questions of whether it, it amounts to a war crime, what actually happened. Were, it, was an, you know, it was an obscenity, uh, just as the bombing of Lübeck was an obscenity, just as the bombing of Hamburg, of Fort Sign, which took place a few days later, which destroyed an even bigger percentage of the city, a bigger percentage of the population there. But it was the, the Soviets asked the Allies to attack that city. The, 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 there was a desperation to get the war finished. Bomber Harris, the British bombers thought, just one more push, we might, this re regime might collapse. The, the people were... It was just the, the, the scale of the war, the scale of the violence, the scale of the trauma on everyone, from politicians down to people on the ground, was people making extraordinary decisions. But, Dan, you know, it was war, and In there no were case, obscenities but... going across the board, weren't there? No, 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 no. You've got... You've got people sitting in ovens, being roasted alive. Roasted mm. alive. Mm. Uh, they're jumping in the water things that well, they've got in the street. And because of the, the Germans are so clever, everything's got to be perfect, the sides were nice and smooth, and they couldn't come out, and they're mm. boiled to death. And mm. you hear all this screaming going on, these poor sods who are trapped in this sort of situation. And when you go to try and get them out, uh, try and get them out of their uh, their shelters. In the in the last one I'd done, which was they said there was five thousand people in there. There wasn't anything but a gooey mess on the floor with some bones. Mm. And all those people who had been alive, and had no whatever you say, they must have known. The powers to be must have known what was going to happen, mm. and they planned it. But and I find no excuse whatsoever. I don't blame the airmen, never blame the airmen. The airmen are seven mile up and they put their life at risk every day. Mm -hmm. I blame Attlee, I blame Churchill, I blame all that lot who were at the end that what they've done in my name mm. is kill all these old people. Mm. For what? To, give, to, to show the Russians what we can do. Because the Russians... We're only about 25 to 30 mile away. Mm. They weren't, you, could hear, you could hear the gunfire, the, the machine gunfire if the wind was blowing towards you. It wasn't all that far away. It's 75 years mm. ago. That's the anniversary. There are commemorations, uh, a human chain of peace and tolerance. We can still see how vivid it is for mm. Victor having lived through it I'm and experienced surprised. it and, uh, and, and must still haunt you as well, mm. uh, Victor. But in terms of... Today, Dan, what's important? Well, it's hard, isn't it? Because today we now know about the monstrous, uh, monstrous crimes of the Nazi regime that mm. were being carried out at that exact same time, and and so that you know there is there's just it's just so difficult to do you the population of Dresden Nazism was particularly strong there, you know, in the years building up to the war, and the, and the Jewish population were expelled, treated unimaginably, and led to industrial slaughter. So there's 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 no there's no. no. You can't start going, this is right and this is wrong in 1945. It's just a hellscape, I think. Mm. But today, yeah, it's about rem remembering and it's about taking ownership of that remembrance because some people in, in the far right in Germany are seeking to say there was an equivalence between what the Allies did to us and what we did to the Jewish and people in the Poles and the gypsies and homosexuals. In, in, in. So it's important that, that we, those of us that are interested in history, love history, take, take control of those memorial events mm. and, and try and educate young people and talk about what happened.